How's it going everybody? Ty Campbell from Teakin Racing and today we're going to cover servo applications, specifically 8 scale nitro, buggy and truggy off-road. So we're going to go over which servos that I'm going to suggest you guys use for these applications and how to set them up. Alright, so in nitro we use two servos, one for the steering left and right, one for the throttle and braking action. So these two servos, while they're both identical, you set them up very differently from each other and I'll explain why here in a little bit. So for steering, I went with our T250. It's gonna put out about 250 ounces of torque at six volts, but we're running it on a 2S LiPo. So it's getting 8.4 volts straight to the servo. So that actually bumps up the torque closer to 315 ounces. And it also makes the speed faster but for some of you, the fast speed might not be the way to go. I'm one of those guys, I don't like a super twitchy servo. So I actually use our hot wire interface on the PC to slow that steering transit speed down. And I'll show you how we do that here in a little bit. Now on the throttle and brake side of things, I also went with a T250. That way my servos match each other and I only have to pack T250s for spares when I go to the racetrack. Now on the throttle and brake side of things, 250 ounces of torque is going to be plenty to grab your brakes and it's also going to be plenty fast on 8.4 volt LiPo for our throttle speed. So we want a really fast throttle and brake servo so that we have the most direct connection between what our trigger finger is doing and what our car is actually doing. So super fast throttle brake, good, super fast steering, for me at least, it makes the car way too twitchy, which is why I slow that servo down through the hot wire. So now that you've seen what these look like inside the car, servos, pretty standard. Let's plug them into our hot wire and set them up, starting with our steering. All right, so we are on our PC and we have the hot wire servo app running. This is a different application than the hot wire ESC app. You can download that off of the Team Teakin website on the download page. And just remember that you need to install this separately from the other hotwire. They're actually two different programs, but they use the same hotwire device. So we've got our servo app up here. It's waiting for us to connect our servo. So I'm gonna connect the throttle servo real quick on our nitro buggy. So actually we're gonna do steering first. Sorry, my bad, we said we were gonna do steering. So you can see right here, I already have changed a few things. First thing being the name. You can actually name the servos over here on the info tab. You can put a custom name on them. And I did this because it's hard to tell which is which in the receiver box. So it just makes it easier to identify which one I'm plugging into. So back over here on performance, let's go over the feel setting real quick. This is gonna change how mild or aggressively the servo leaves a position and approaches a target position. So our servos are very smart and they actually start to break as we approach the target position. So for steering, I actually turned mine down. The default is right here in the middle of the scale. I went down just a tiny bit just to knock some of that edge off so that it doesn't try to get to its position so quickly and make anything twitchy. Now speed limit is the other thing that I changed. That's this one right here. And you can see that I have it set to 0.09 seconds for 60 degrees. So basically what you're doing is changing the speed. Now you can only go slower than what the servo is actually rated for. So on 8.4 volt LiPo, this servo is rated at about 0.07 transit speed. So because that is just so lightning fast on steering, I don't like it. Uh, maybe you will. So that's just something to play with, but I have mine set to 0.09 so that the speed is about the same that it would be running off of six volts, like in my e-buggy. So in e-buggy, I don't use the high voltage BEC very often, if ever, anymore, and I like the 0.09 transit speed of the T250. So now we go over here to setup. In this car, I had to reverse the direction. Now you can do this on your transmitter also, but I was already in here, so we just went ahead and checked this little reverse box right here. So you can see that I actually have my steering servo set up right here to go 60 degrees both ways. And the way that we can measure that is we've got this cool little guy right here. You can see him bouncing around and that's actually because my wheels aren't sitting dead center. So if we center those up and then we can turn it full lock one way, 
31.9 degrees and that is moving clockwise if you're looking at this like a clock face. So now I did this on my radio, but I'm gonna show you how you can do this in here. So 31.6, I would take this, the travel clockwise, all the way down to 31. So that means that the servo is gonna to go to 31 with the radio set at 100% throw. Let's get this guy down, so we'll set him at 31. Now we'll do the other side. So full right is just about the same, 30.5. And that's with me pushing on it a little bit. So I would set the counterclockwise travel to 30. Remember that's degrees off center. We're going off what this guy is saying right here. So that basically sets our endpoints and then we can fine tune them in the radio off of 100%. So now you know that 31 one way and 30 the other way is your full lock to lock range. And then you can adjust them using the dual rate or the steering throw on your radio. Now down here, soft start, I have this turned on. What this does is just slow the speed down. So it's gonna take one second to travel 60 degrees. So that means if my servo is turned all the way to one direction and I flip the battery on, it's going to go from its current position back to center. It's gonna take it one second to go 60 degrees. So actually it'll take it about half a second. So all that does is slow it down. And then the torque is 35%. So it, if it's ever bound on anything, it won't just sit there and keep trying to throw full power at it and get through it. So if you ever leave your car plugged on and toss it somewhere, you know, or, or it accidentally gets turned on, then you're not at risk of burning anything up. So over here on alarms, I have my maximum temperature alarm set to 180. Uh, the tone is on and it's set to latch. So that means that if this ever happens, if it ever gets over 180, it's going to latch that alarm and you'll hear it actually making a little beep sound from the motor inside of the servo. That's also going to reduce the torque to 50% to try and protect itself. And here's our voltage minimum maximum. If the servo ever sees anything less than 3.7 volts, again, the tone is on, it's latched. Um, it beeps a little bit faster than the max temp and volt max. So if it ever goes over 8.6, it's going to throw that code again. So if you charge, uh, if you have an LIHV receiver pack, don't charge it all the way to LIHV. The servo will not like that and it actually won't let you drive. It'll just sit there and beep this tone until the voltage dips below what this is set to. So 8.6, we just leave that there. Bind relief, I have mine set to 50%. So that way, if it ever does get bound up, it will just chop down to 50% after the timer inside the servo senses that it can't get to its target position and prevent it from burning itself up and that reduces the amp draw that it is pulling while it's bound up and reduces the temperature. So less of a chance for it to hurt itself. Uh, fail safe, I don't do anything with the steering. I actually do fail safe on the throttle. So let's go plug our throttle servo in real quick and make sure that we save these settings. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll do the throttle servo. All right, NB48 throttle right up here at the top, it's named. I've got it set all the way to aggressive, so it actually starts braking later as it's approaching its target position, and it's really fast moving off of a position to a target position. So it's not changing the transit speed, it's just changing the amount of brake being applied, reaching that target position, so it makes it more aggressive. And for throttle and brake, we want this thing snappy. Speed limit, I don't do anything with this. Just leave it at the 0.03. That means that this servo is actually about 0.07 uh, at 8.4 volts LiPo. We're gonna leave the torque at 100 and we're not going to mess with torque delay. We want this thing snappy. All right, now over on setup, we're gonna set our travels clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, I did have to reverse this servo as well. So check the reverse box and the travel. Here's where we need to set our throttle pull and our brake push. Now we don't have to get these exact. We're just setting the maximums in here and then we'll dial it on our radio because you're gonna have to change your throttle pull depending on the size of Venturi that you're running. It's very important to get that setting dialed in. 
So let's go ahead and pull our throttle open. And that is our counterclockwise travel. So looks like we're about 26 degrees off of center to open the carburetor all the way up. So our throttle pull counterclockwise, this one is good right at 26. Now we need to set our brake push. So let's go the other way. Twist the servo and push on the brakes, the brake springs. I can force it to, man, about 17 degrees. So looks like we could bump that up just a little bit. Let's go to 15. That's probably plenty of brake push. And I always end up setting my brakes in like that 50 to 75 range, depending on the track. So make sure to save those settings. That way our throttle and brake throws are about correct. Soft start, I have this turned on and torque at 35%. Over here on alarms, basically all the same stuff until we get to fail safe. Now I have my fail safe so that if I ever lose radio signal, so like if your radio batteries go dead, it, the receiver stops transmitting a signal for whatever reason, but the servo still has power, it's going to go to this preset failsafe position, which is 1.1 milliseconds. Now, that is basically going to throw the brakes on for me. So 1.000 would be full brakes. So we're not going all the way to full brake, but we're definitely throwing some brakes on so this thing will stop and the failsafe speed is just set to the default 0.6 at 60 degrees. So it's gonna take it a half a second to get there. So it's kind of a slow action, but it does look cool when you power up the car. Without your radio on, it'll automatically go to failsafe position and throw the brakes on. Also for bind relief, I have that set to 25%. So what that's going to do is relieve any binding and it's going to drop the power to 25%. So having my uh, fail safe set to put brakes on, I also have that bind relief set so that if it does ever put brakes on, it's not sitting there and trying to put all the servos power into holding that position. So it'll actually drop a little bit and it won't be risking burning itself up. Now this is not a replacement for a mechanical return spring. You still need to have that on your carburetor so that the spring or rubber band can pull it closed if you ever lose power completely or if the servo just gives out. Well, that is it for settings. As you can see, these are not really your standard servo. There's a lot more inside of these that you can do and customize to suit your driving style and just make them feel the way that you want them to feel. Now, wait a minute, what about Truggy? We totally skipped that, that's my bad. Actually, Truggy is gonna be basically the same as Buggy. The only thing I would recommend is going up to a T300, maybe even a T360 for more torque to push those big Truggy wheels and tires around. As for throttle, it's still the same game. You still want really fast. You want enough torque to hold brakes, so that's why I would still recommend the T250 for throttle and brake application in a Nitro Truggy. So that's Tekken Servos for Nitro. I'm really enjoying Nitro so far. Got a couple races under my belt and hope to get more soon. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys at the racetrack. So until then, I'm Ty Campbell. Keep it rubber side down.